got a story to tell him. Amen. Great thing to know that you're saved. Amen. And do you imagine trying to keep it, you know, not not knowing the doctrine of eternal security and trying to keep it and and going about every day and just worrying about that and saying, man, I'm glad I know that I'm saved. And, Okay, we're going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 12, or 13. I'm going to talk a little bit about 12 before we get into 13, since we've finished up, but just to recap a little bit. Anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we do thank you for the opportunity to be here, Lord. We're thankful for your book, Father, and for the many promises that are in that, Lord, that we know we can depend on them, Lord, that they're more true and real than, than uh, us being here today, Father. We know that your book says we're he's seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and God, we're just thankful that we can know that and uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Father, and, and uh, know that we have already passed from death unto life by putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just thank you for that this morning, Father. We just pray, God, as uh, we open your word, Lord, that uh, you'd bless us through it, Father. And uh, I pray that you'd use me to 
uh, teach and, and pray, Lord, that you help me to keep my mind on the book. And, and Lord, we just pray for the services to come. Father, we just pray that we'd have a blessed day in the Lord. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, 2 Samuel, chapter, in chapter 12, again, we talked about David and, uh, you know, and uh, I'm going to just mention a few things. Um, you know, there was judgment for David's sin with Bathsheba. And, and in 2 Samuel uh, 12, it says, uh, in verse 10, it says, now, now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take up thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of uh, this son. He says, For thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck that child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. So again, there is judgment. Even though God forgave him, there's still judgment. There's still uh, consequences to the sin uh, you commit in the flesh. So again, uh, you know, God forgave him, but still... He's going to have to live out some of these consequences. And again, we're going to see some of this as we get into chapter 13. And uh, another thing I wanted to mention, again, uh, 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 David should have been out there fighting against the Ammonites and, uh, rather than being in the palace anyway. He was in the wrong place. And even Joab, you see Joab a couple times, he just sort of... Uh, sort of picking at, at David a little bit, and he did it with the servant when he sent his servant there to uh, uh, tell David what happened and how Uriah died, and, and, and uh, the servant says uh, to David, or the servant's told, told to tell David, you know, uh, if he questions why he went too close to the wall, uh, you know, that uh, a lot of the Israelites were killed, and of course Uriah the Hittite was killed also. Um, and I think, I think that was Joab's way of sort of just getting at David, uh, letting David know that he was in the wrong uh, when he, the way the question was. And then again, also, uh, when Joab uh, fought against uh, Rabbah and, and the children of Ammon in verse 26 in chapter 12, it says, And took the royal city, and Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah, and I have taken the city of waters. Now therefore, gather the rest of the people and encamp against the city, lest I take it, and it be called after my name. Because, uh, again, he... Uh, Joab saying that because, again, he knows David should have been there. Uh, rather than uh, sitting in the palace where, again, he became vulnerable to uh, commit the sin that he committed. And uh, so, uh, again, we know that David does go there and uh, is there at the end of the battle, but basically Joab did all the work, okay? And uh, David should have been more involved with what was going on in the battle, but he had his mind elsewhere. And... Uh, Again, because of uh, David's sin there, again, like it said, that the sword shall never depart from thine house, and he says he'll raise up evil against him out of his own house, and it begins, of course, right away. Again, he loses his son. Remember last week he, he mourned for his son and, and prayed for him, and perchance the Lord would change his mind. And again, we know that, I mean, we've seen in the Scripture that uh, right heart towards God and a repentant heart towards God could get God, you know, God does change his mind on occasion because people repent. And, uh, uh, you know, again, in the days of Noah, he, God was ready to just wipe out man on the earth. And what does he do? Because he, he's seen a righteous man. He decides to spare Noah and his family. And, I mean, you can see that in several occasions. Actually, uh, wasn't it Abraham? He told Abraham, you know, I'll just wipe out the Israelites and I'll start over. 
I believe it was Abraham, wasn't it? And, uh, and uh, you know, so, and because of him, or was it Moses? It was Moses, I believe. And uh, he tells Moses, yeah, I'd wipe out the people. And, uh, and Moses went before the Lord and he prayed and the Lord changed his mind on that thing. So again, uh, David, he's hoping that, that the Lord would hear his pray and spare the child's life. But in this case, he did not. So, um, but it's good to pray and put your petitions before the Lord. I'm glad that even today that we can boldly go before the throne of grace anytime we want. And uh, I mean, we have uh, great promises in the New Testament that they didn't have back in the Old Testament. So I'm thankful for that. And again, uh, you know, we have the Lord Jesus Christ as our mediator, and and again. <laughs> The promise of salvation is, I mean, we just have so many blessings in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, after, after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And I'm thankful for that. And again, the greatest is eternal security. And, uh, and then again, the fellowship that we personally can have with the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so I'm thankful for that. But anyway, in chapter 13, it goes on. Uh, uh, and it says, And it came to pass after this that, the, that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon uh, was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was uh, Jonadab, the son of Shema, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I have loved Tamar, uh, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down in thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it of her hand. Okay, so again, uh, uh, we have Amnon here, and again, he's infatuated with Tamar, and, and uh, again, to the point where he, was, he, he said he loved her, but again, when we, as we read this, we find that, again, it's lust, it's not love, and uh, he lusted after his sister, and uh, again, we went to a few verses last week, again, when lusts conceive, it brings forth sin, and, and again, we see the sin that, uh, again, eventually leads to Amnon, Ammon's death. But when we look at Amnon and who he is, again, he was David's firstborn son. In uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 3, in verse 2, it said, And unto David were sons born in Hebron, and his firstborn was Amnon, the son of Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, uh, Jezreelites. Uh, but anyway, he was a crown prince. He was next in line, in all reality, to take the throne. Okay, and uh, and uh, but again, because of his sin, and and as we go into this and and read it, it's a terrible thing what happens here. But again, you have Jonadab, and Jonadab again, he's. Uh, is uh, David's half brother, I believe, if I remember correctly. He's David's half brother, and uh, it says there in verse three, it says uh, that uh, Jonadab uh, was very subtle man, and he said unto him, "Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day?" So again, we look, we'll look at this advice that Jonadab gives unto uh, Amnon. And again, it's evil advice. We got to watch out who we take advice from. Amen. You just need to be careful. And again, when you get advice, you need to check it out with the book and make sure that you know it's true. And uh, 
and sound, you know. Again, that's why it's so important to rightly divide the word of truth. There's people that spend time in the Bible really don't uh, know how to rightly divide the word of truth, and they can be led astray by evil advice. And they might, it might sound good to them, but that's, again, why we need to be students of the Bible continually and know the Word of God that we might be able to make sound decisions. And, I mean, it's not bad to go to advice. I mean, uh, go to someone to advice, you know, in the counsel of two or three, there's a lot of wisdom. If, if it's good counsel, the thing is you got to make sure where you're getting your counsel from, make sure it's sound, and again, check it out with the Word of God also. But again, uh, uh, Amnon, in his case, of course, he goes talks to Jonadab, and he's getting advice that he wants to hear. Again, a lot of times when you're getting advice, you've got to make sure it's not what you want to hear, but what is right, okay, what's true. Because sometimes uh, you'll take the advice that you want to hear and what you want to do rather than what you should do. And it's always easier to take the advice that your old man wants than what your new man wants. You've got to be careful about that. You've got to look at it from that perspective as Christians, that, that you're, uh, again, that it's sound advice and godly advice. But Jonadab here, he, he's, uh, uh, in verse 5, said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat. And dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it at her hand. So Ammon lay down and made himself sick. And when he saw the king uh, come to see him, Ammon said unto the king, I pray thee, let uh, Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat it at her hand. So again, David... Gives him what he wants, amen? It's his firstborn son, you know. Uh, he uh, listens to him and, and gives him what he wants. And, and we, as parents, you need to be careful as well, amen? And, and, uh, and give your, you know, deal with your kids appropriately because a lot of times we sort of favor our kids and, you know, we can look and see what other parents are doing with their kids and criticize them, but when it comes to our own kids, I mean, we're a little uh, sometimes different than what we, we should be, you know, we should be. I mean, you see it happen all the time. You favor your own kids. You're your own kids, you know, don't do wrong in your sight, you know. Uh, in many cases, in many cases, not always. I, I believed in discipline. I disciplined my kids always, but um, and but anyway, let's go. Uh, <laughs> um, in verse seven, it said, "Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Ammon's house and dress um, him meat.' And Tamar went to her brother <clears throat> Ammon's house, and uh, he was laid down." And she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him. Um, but he refused to eat. And Ammon said, have out all the men from me. And they went out, every one from him. Again, here she comes over. She takes, does what she's told by her father. She's just being obedient to her father and taking care of her brother. And, uh, and he's just, uh, you know... Uh, it just reminds me of a little spoiled brat there. Well, you know, I'm not, I don't want to eat it. He's got to have it his way. Okay, again, he's got other plans, you know, in his mind. I'll tell you what, you young women, be careful as you get older and you meet boys and stuff. They'll be real sweet to you until they get what they want. You got to be careful about that. And that's exactly what, you know, he's trying to do. But you need to be careful about that. Especially in day and age we live in, you know, I mean, um, it's, it's, you know, uh, things that are taught as, it's not taught as sin. Sexual immora immorality is not taught to be sin out there in the world. It's okay. Whatever you want to do is okay. And uh, so you better be careful when you're out there. I was at some friend's house last night and there were a couple people talking. Uh, they had uh, some people over. Uh, my friend Tom and Gina and I went over there to visit them and some pe a couple of their friends were there and they were talking about their uh, daughter was dating this man and, and then they asked my opinion on, on it, you know, and uh, 
because they didn't care for the guy. I guess they say he was a nice guy and stuff. And it's like, well, you know, and, there, and she was like 23 or something like that. So, well, really, you know, if she's living in your house, you have some authority. But if she's not, basically, she's on, on her own. You could give her advice, though, and tell her to watch out and be careful. But they should have been raised with that, uh, you know, and have their guard up when, when they meet individuals. Uh, again, uh, the day and age we live in, nothing's, you know, taught to be wrong anymore. So, again, that's why I have the book, and, and we need to follow the book and uh, go by that. But again, so he comes in, or she comes in, makes cakes in her side, sends all the men of the house out, and uh, verse 9, or... Verse 10, And Annan said unto Tamar, Bring meat into the chamber that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them uh, unto the chamber and, Amnon, uh, and to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not this folly. So again, uh, she shows some resistance there, and she, she does uh, really point out that it is sin, that it is wrong, and this thing shouldn't be done in Israel. Well, this thing shouldn't be done anywhere, amen? This is, this is the sin of rape, and it should not have been done to her. In verse 13, uh, uh, in verse 13, it says, And I whither shall I cause... Uh, my shame to go, and as for me, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. And uh, and uh, so again, he basically Amnon's telling her, "Well, Dad's okay with this, you know. He wouldn't withhold thee." But again, it was forbidden. It was forbidden for uh, uh, in Israel for. Uh, man to have his stepsister, okay, is and that's what she was. But uh, it was forbidden, and uh, uh, again, it, uh, well, anyway, let's continue on. I'm getting ahead of my notes again, okay. And uh, in verse 14, it says, "How be it? He uh, he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger." Then she, he forced her and lay with her. Then Ammon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Ammon said unto her, Arise and be gone. So again, here, after the fact, he hates her more than he ever loved her. And uh, you young ladies, as you grow up, again, you need to be careful because you allow that thing to happen and many times they're trying to be sweet nice to you and get your attention then once they uh, get what they want a lot of times they'll just push you aside right. if that's their motive if their true motive is is lust rather than love they'll put you aside that's how come it's a good thing as the word of god tells us to wait until marriage amen as for for the marital uh uh, relationship alone. So, again, uh, listen to your parents. Listen to the Word of God. Amen. And uh, and uh, then verse uh, fifteen. Again, he rejects uh, Amnon. Rejects Tamar there. And uh, and uh, verse sixteen. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This ev this evil in sending me away is greater than the other. Thou did to me, but he would not hearken uh, unto her. Then he called the servant that ministered unto him and put now uh, this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of different colors upon her, for, the, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then uh, his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of different colors uh, that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went crying. Okay, and um, uh, again, uh, 
uh, this garment that she wore, from what I've read, it usually was a long garment, longer sleeves, and it really would, uh, uh, again, a garment of different colors, it would sort of represent that she was the daughter of a king and not a servant. A servant would have shorter sleeves, be able to work in the garment, where this garment was something that you could look on, but actually it wasn't practical for uh, doing service in. And so again, uh, she rent the garment because uh, again, the sin was committed against her and put ashes on her head. She was uh, mourning, uh, again, she had lost her virginity to her brother. And then in verse 20, And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So uh, Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard all these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spoke these, uh, spake unto his brother Amnon, uh, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. Now you see, David hears about this, but then David, you don't really see him... Uh, uh, deal with Amnon for the sin that he had done. And could it be that David knows of his own sins? Again, you know, um, he still should have dealt with it. Right. He should have admitted his fault and said, yeah, what I've done was wrong, but what you did was a terrible thing as well. Um, again, uh, I know as, you know, again, living a good portion of my life lost before uh, before I was married, then when we had kids and stuff, and and uh, my ex-wife and I, we would never talk about the things of the past in front of our kids. We didn't want them to know what our past was like. Yeah. You know, we wanted to let them uh, grow up in a nurturing and you know uh, a godly home. We wanted wanted and. and Forget those things which be hard and, and push forward, you know. And, uh, and uh, so, again, a lot of the things that we had done in our past, and, and I mean, we weren't terrible people by all means, but again, you don't, you don't have to disclose those things that were done prior to being saved. And therefore, you know, they won't question uh, your love for the Lord and, and your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and that type of thing. So I know um, there's been times even we get together with uh, family members and things would get brought up that, you know, and they'd be laughing about things in the past. And I know Joyce and I many times asked family, hey, you know, my kids are here. That is over. That's done with. We're Christians now. We don't live like that anymore. Don't bring that stuff up. Again, we want to be a godly example to our children. Amen. And uh and uh, so uh, it is good to be a godly example. And I believe this is uh, to some degree why uh, uh, David doesn't uh, deal with his son for his sin. Um, again, uh, you know, in Exodus 25, it talks about, you know, the iniquity of the fathers carried by the children of the third and fourth generations. And uh, again, we see again, like I read in the last chapter, that you know the sword would not depart from David's house. And again, he's going to uh, have to deal with uh, many things uh, because of his sin. But again, he, I believe he should have dealt with Amnon himself. But uh, because he doesn't deal with Am Amnon, then Absalom takes it uh, upon his own uh hand to do something about it. And again, it, I mean, it, when Absalom speaks to Amnon, again, he never spoke good or evil about it, but he let Amnon know that he knew what had happened. But then Amnon, I mean, Absalom, he's plotting in his mind what he's going to do. I mean, it's a couple of years as we read that, you know, he thinks about this and ponders this thing. And it probably uh, you know, continues to build and build, and the anger continues to build and build. And, uh, you know, um, had he dealt with it in a proper way, there may have been forgiveness there, you know. And had Amnon repented of it, there may have been forgiveness there. I know it's a terrible sin, but again, uh, you know, the Lord forgave David for his sin. Uh, 
and you know, forgiveness is an important thing. Uh, uh, I've heard people teach and, and say, well, you don't forgive unless, you know, you're asked to forgive. Well, you, if you don't forgive someone when they trespass against you, that thing will build and eat at you and eat at you and it gets worse and worse. I know people for years and years had awed against a brother or sister because of something they did, never forgave them and never talked over it with them. And, and you could bring that up and you can... Uh, 20, 30 years later, and you can see that anger still there, and it's even stronger than ever. And they'll blame a lot of things that went wrong in their life because they were angry at somebody uh, for something they did, you know, years and years prior. And you can see this anger sort of building up in Absalom, where if the thing was taken care of, it could have really saved his life. Amen. And uh, not only saved his life, but it could have saved some of the problems in the family. So there's a lot of issues when, when someone does something and you don't deal with it properly. It's a good thing just to take care of it and get it over with and then to let it fester. And that's exactly what uh, happens with Absalom here. Uh, so uh, uh, verse 23, it says, And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had the sheep shears and uh, Belhazar, uh, which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's son. And again, uh, when it came to that time of the year when they were shearing the sheep, it was almost, uh, it was not unusual to have like a feast because it was almost like the harvest. They'd celebrate the harvest. So you shearing your sheep, it's like the harvest as well. You know, uh, you're shearing your sheep and, you know, it's made into wool or sold or whatever, and, and it's a time of income and celebration in, in a sense. Uh, so again, uh, he, it, it wouldn't have been unusual for him to have a feast for his family. And so he invited all the king's son, and Absalom came uh, to the king and said, Behold, now thy servant hath sheep shears. Let the king, I beseech thee, and his servants go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all uh, uh, go, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but blessed him. Then Absalom said, If not, I pray thee, let thy brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom pressed him that the, uh, he let Amnon and all the kings go with him. Okay, so again, uh, I wonder what David was thinking at that time. I mean, I wonder if he knew that Absalom had the ought that he had against his brother. He would think that he might have been uh, somewhat skeptical of that and possibility. I mean, he really didn't want him to go. And again, he used it as, you know, well, we don't want to, you know, uh, in, intrude on you, Absalom, is what David was saying. And, uh, of course, King David doesn't go, but he, he lets Amnon go with him. And I wonder what Amnon was thinking as he was heading over uh, to be with Absalom. And uh, I imagine when he first got there, he was probably a little bit edgy about that, knowing what he had done. Again, sometimes you think you've covered your sin. David thought he had his sin covered, right? And uh, again, uh, it came and uh, again, he did everything he could to try and cover it again, uh, tried to get what he do he get he got uh, Uriah drunk and tried to get Uriah to go down and, and uh, be with his wife and it didn't work out. Well, it didn't work out then the second night he got him drunk, tried to do the same and then finally just had him killed, um, brought him to the front line where he got shot off the wall. And uh, again, here we see that uh, Absalom sort of does somewhat the same thing. He, he, he gets, uh, gets uh, Amnon dr to drink here, and then when he's drunken a bit, well, then he's sort of relaxed, and he gets his servants to go after him. Let's read on. It says uh, in verse 27, but Absalom pressed that the he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom commanded his young servants, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, 
then kill him. Fear not, hath not I commanded you? His face, uh, excuse me, turned too many pages here. Uh, okay, have not I commanded you? Uh, be courageous and be valiant. Then the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man gat him up upon his mule and fled. So again, very similar situation. Uh, David gets... Uh, uh, Uriah to drink, and here you have Absalom. He's getting Amnon to drink, and then again, he probably became more relaxed. And because I imagine he was pretty uptight when he first got there, you know, knowing what had happened and knowing that there may be possible revenge. But then, as things were going on, he sort of relaxed, and then uh, Absalom has his uh, his uh, servants kill him. Um, verse 30, And it came to pass while they were uh, in the way that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom has slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. Then the king arose and tear his garments and lay on, his earth, on the earth, and all his servants stood by with him, their clothes rent. And what surprises about me about this, Ab, uh, David just assumes that what he's heard is true. Doesn't, you never see where he questions it, uh, this bad news that he hears. And, and so again, I think that it is David convinced that Absalom is capable of doing such a thing? You know, I mean, he knows his son. And, uh, but, I mean, if I heard something like that, you know, about one of my kids doing something like that, I would question it before I, you know, it'd break my heart right away. But then again, I, I would, uh, I'd have to find out for myself. Amen. I'd just have to check it out because I wouldn't believe that one of my kids was capable of doing something like that, you know. And again, he, it's like he just uh, rents his clothes and, and lays on the earth. And, and, uh, and then verse 32 and Jonadab, again, a man full of good advice, uh, the son of Shemiah, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom hath this been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. So I guess it's somewhat better news. I mean, only uh, Amnon's dead. The rest of the sons are alive. But, uh, so it's somewhat good news, I guess you could say. But again, it's still, I mean, it's still his son is gone. Uh, and uh, uh, verse 34, it says, But Absalom fled, and the young man that kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there came much people by the way of the hillside behind him. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come, as thy servant said. So it is. And it came to pass, as soon as he made an end of speaking, behold, the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept. And the king also and all his servants wept very sore. So again, there is great mourning for their brother Amnon. And... Uh, and uh, 37, it says, But Absalom fled and went to Talmai, the son of uh, Amahad, the king of Geshur, and David mourned for his son every day. So again, uh, you hear, you see separation, lack, uh, uh, and a fellowship between the king and his son, amen, because of the sin. And we know from studying the word of God that because of our sin, sometimes uh, there's fellowship where, you know, it reminds me also of uh, the prodigal son who goes off to a far country and there's a lack of fellowship yeah. there. And just as as a father of the prodigal, King David mourns for his son. He wants to restore that fellowship with Absalom, even though, again, Amnon's sin led Absalom to sin uh, just as great of a sin uh, taking Amnon's life. Amen. But uh, again, we see there the king uh, uh, where uh, Absalom went 
and uh, he went goes to Geshur, and Geshur, uh, in 2 Samuel 3, verse 3, is in, it says in his second, talking about uh, David's children, and it says in his second, Cheliab of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom, the son of Mekah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. So again, uh, Absalom, where he goes is to be with his mother's family. And his, his grandfather was the king of Geshur, so that's where Absalom flees to uh, from his family. But again, like I said, it's like the prodigal going to a far country the, the, because of his sin, and there's a, a loss of uh, fellowship there. And again, because of our sin, sometimes there's a loss of fellowship. That's why the Bible tells us to confess our sins uh, you know, to the Lord. And, and again, we don't f confess them. Yeah, we want forgiveness of God, but we know that in Christ Jesus, we've been cleansed from all sin, even the sins we have not even committed yet. But again, when we do sin against God, what happens is we lose fellowship. We cut fellowship with him. And then when we repent of that sin and ask forgiveness, that fellowship is restored. And you can see David, a uh, picture of, of the Lord in this situation, wants that fellowship restored. Well, when we're going the wrong way, the Lord Jesus Christ, he wants that fellowship right. restored. He'd like us to confess and repent of our sin that we might restore that fellowship. And it says there, verse 39, it says, And the soul of King David longed to go forth on Absalom, for he was comfort concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. But again, he longed to go forth. The Lord Jesus Christ longs to come after us, but many times, it's our responsibility, many times when we sin against God, it's up to us to uh, repent of that sin because we transgress the commandment of God. It's up to us to make that move and, and ask for forgiveness and get the fellowship restored. Though King David wanted to go to Absalom, but you know he doesn't at, right here because, again, a great picture of that relationship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ being the Son of God. Amen? Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to end there today. We're out of time. But a lot of interesting things here. A lot of things you can learn from this chapter and apply and, and just see. And I know I've been trying to do a chapter a week and don't get into it as deep as you probably could. I, I know you could get much deeper into it. But... I'm trying to get through the book in a reasonable amount of time. And, and uh, so we'll continue on uh, next week in chapter 14. So let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we do thank you for the opportunity to be here. Again, we're thankful for the Word of God, Father. We're thankful, God, for these things that we can uh, learn from this chapter. We know that uh, uh, all the information that is given uh, were in samples for us, for our learning, God, that we might live... Uh, a godly life before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just ask you to bless the service to come. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.